We might have thought that the ANC was going to deliver. That was the hope in 1994. Uh, for a long time, the uh, jury was out. I think now the verdict is in, and the verdict is ANC cannot deliver. It's not going to deliver. Is the so-called Great Reset coming to South Africa, or is it already here? This was a question that was posed to us at a recent CRA client webinar. What follows is a short extract from this webinar featuring CRA director, John Endres. Enjoy. That's a good opportunity for us to address Brett's question. Uh, and Brett is talking about uh, the kind of the global economy and governance systems. And he says that uh, Italian prime minister, Giorgia Maloney recently called out the neo-imperialism of France and Africa. This has led to some discussion on the globalist agenda, particularly as regards to the Great Reset, uh, which is put forward by the World Economic Forum. To what extent does the panel think that this is driving various political moves in the South African climate? John, do you want to have a go at that? Not so sure about the Great Reset and the globalist uh, agenda, um, but I do think that in the sense that, you know, from what little I understand of it, uh, the, the idea being that you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, that I think seems to be something that is quite closely aligned with what we see in South Africa. Uh, if you think of the various components of the National Democratic Revolution, uh, the grand plan guiding ANC policy and thinking, uh, which has been around for a lot longer than the World Economic Forum. Um, I think that is what you're seeing today in South Africa. And if you if you think back to September last year, the Department of Social Development put out a green paper on a national social security fund. And if you read that green paper, you'll see somewhere on page four, a very startling uh, revelation where they say it used to be our expectation that South Africans would be able to provide for themselves by having jobs and earning an income. We've come to realize that this is not possible <laughs> and we will have to therefore support South Africans uh, because they won't be able to earn a living for mm. themselves. Uh, a startling admission, I think, by by any stretch of the imagination, because what they're saying is, you know, people are unable to take care of themselves in South Africa. So the state's got to step in and it's got, basically got to give people money. It is reflected across other parts of the policy spectrum as well. If you think of the expropriation without compensation agenda, uh, people mistakenly believe that uh, property or land will be expropriated from one group of people and then given to another group of people who will then own it. That is not the plan. The plan is that uh, recipients of land will become tenants on state-owned land. They will not own the land. They will be tenants and will supposedly be happy. But of course, they will be completely dependent on the state. We see that in the national health insurance as well. We're currently, I believe it is about 16% of the population has private medical insurance uh, and is therefore covering their own medical needs. Um, but the national health insurance will do away with that and it will put everyone, every single South African, into a state uh, health system, uh, which supposedly will supply equal quality of universal healthcare coverage for everyone. Uh, it may be that it's an equal standard, but it is going to be a low standard, uh, that, that is for sure. And once again, it is another way in which individuals are being disempowered and uh, the state is being empowered. So that I think is the similarity uh, that, that I see with, with this, uh, this uh, great reset idea. Um, I'm not so sure whether that idea applies on a global scale, but here in South Africa, I think we certainly do see parallels um, that, that are quite concerning and that are int intimately and intricately linked to the ANC and its guiding ideology. Yeah, I think that that's uh, very well expressed. And I think it uh, speaks to some of the ideological origins of the party, uh, sees itself as a vanguard for the people and that it is the custodian of the popular will. Um, and so that is a very different understanding from the kind of liberal democratic understanding of that you know, politicians uh, campaign or electioneer for popular support and are the servants uh, of, of those who elected them. Uh, it's kind of getting the cart before the horse there. Uh, all right, well, I see that Patrick has a question and asks, um, are we witnessing the collapse of the ANC and how will this affect ordinary communities in South Africa and should South Africa adopt an enclave system? Um, because he says that the state is becoming weaker and he talks about um, you know, the security situation in uh, South Africa's townships and so on. A long question, uh, which I, is too long perhaps to read now. But, um, you know, our erstwhile 
director Franz Crenier in his scenario sets you know, often used to speak about one scenario as the kind of the enclave society. And uh, I remember when I first joined the, the CRA, I thought, yeah, you know, that seems to be quite a remote possibility. But now uh, we are seeing a, a disaggregation in, in South Africa uh, where the middle classes are uh, increasingly disconnecting from the electricity grid. Uh, you know, we're seeing the, the collapse of water reticulation systems and sewage systems, particularly in rural uh, municipalities and civil society organizations, business groups like Sarkilicha, AfriForum, et cetera, mobilizing on the ground to provide these services um, completely independently of the state. And then also we are seeing uh, organized criminal syndicates that are rushing in to fill the void as well. And that is also having a very disruptive uh, effect on the system. You know, if you think of how mining companies and construction companies are being terrorized in places like uh, KZN, uh, you know, it making it very difficult for them to operate. You see violent gangs operating with impunity in places like the Cape Flats. And then now the, the Western Cape government, the city of Cape Town is deploying their own policing units, the Law Enforcement Advancement Program, so you're starting to see a real disruption of the, the institutional matrix that has characterized South Africa since 1994. And basically a, a spirit of, well, we're hot full and we need to solve some of these problems ourselves. Uh, John, do you want to respond to that, that question that we received around uh, the Enclave Society? To sort of add a little bit of an optimistic spin to this, which is the notion that firstly, uh, following on from, from Brett's question earlier, what the current political change does is that it makes this kind of NDR centrally controlled solution impossible. So what we've had in South Africa for decades, if not centuries now, is that a single authority exercised almost untrammeled power. Now, that's been the case for the ANC with its very dominant majorities in the state. It was the case for the NP before that, uh, before that, you know, South Africa was a colony. Um, so for much of our history, you know, there would be one group calling the shots and making decisions on behalf of South Africans, for better or for worse, uh, very often for worse. And we are, that is a paradigm that's, that's ending now. And the paradigm that we're entering into now is where there's going to be not an untrammeled exercise of power, but rather a negotiated exercise of power with limitations and limits on power, on, on state power. And that is actually quite a good thing because it means that South Africans will have far more opportunity to guide and determine the outcomes that they get, um, be it on a local level, decentralized level, enclave basis, or otherwise through the formal political system, where instead of having one party in power, you might have five or six, and they will have to work together to you know, uh, express the electorate's concerns and priorities in their policies. This is actually quite a good thing. Um, I think it is going to be messy for a while, um, and it's very scary what we're experiencing right now in terms of load shedding and problems with water and transport. Everything is looking pretty dire. But if you think, if you look a bit further ahead and sort of look at the big picture of where things are changing, how they are changing, this is actually quite quite an encouraging time. Um, you know, we might have thought that the ANC was going to deliver. That was the hope in 1994. Uh, for a long time, the uh, jury was out. I think now the verdict is in. And the verdict is ANC cannot deliver. It's not going to deliver. But that means that the ANC has to leave in order for the outcomes to improve. And the ANC is leaving. I think it is collapsing. It's like you're going down a, down a river and the river keeps speeding up and there's a waterfall at the end of the river. At some point, that collapse is going to happen in ANC support, I think. I think that their, their base support is probably around 20 25%. That's how far they can, they can drop. Uh, that's not going to happen at one, one stage. It's more like cataracts than a, you know, a single drop waterfall. Um, but that is where we're heading. The ANC is going to become a 20% party, 25% party, comparable in size to the DA with lots and lots of other smaller parties in the spectrum around it. Thanks for watching. Let's hand over to you, our audience. What do you make of the so-called Great Reset? Do you believe in it? Is it coming to South Africa or is it already here? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this analysis, you might want to check out the full-length recording of this webinar that's available to members of the channel. You can also become a client of the CRA. There's a link in the description below where you can find out more information. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.